I'm here with Dr. Howard Bukowski, Professor of Physical Therapy and creator of the Posture Jack. We're doing a series of informal interviews, giving you more insight as to why this unique device requires and should be get, get your attention as a device that can profoundly change the way you carry your posture and, the, and, and your awareness of your posture. Uh, Dr. Murkowski, there seems to be a lot of attention given to conditioning the deep neck flexor muscles. And it's about time. Can you explain what they do? Sure. The um, problem with any uh, research related to the neck, which we call officially the cervical spine, or as uh, the UK, uh, folks in the UK refer to it, or in Canada as the cervical spine, or Australia, New Zealand, um, is that for years, much of what was believed to be the case in the neck was derived from what we knew about the low back. Um, but what's happening now, there's an explosion in new research related mm -hmm. to the function of the cervical spine of the neck, and what happens when there's impairment. And we're finding that the way there is a core system in the low back, which um, we often address with Pilates type exercises, um, there's also a core system in the neck. There are small muscles that, prov that provide um, stability and uh, alignment of the cervical spine that um, are very difficult to, to feel, to palpate, for the examiner, but very difficult to train um, for the patient. And they take um, a lot of instruction. And they are muscles that have fancy names like the rectus capitis anterior and the uh, longus capitis and the rectus capitis lateralis. Um, but they are deep muscles that provide core stability in the neck the way the core muscles in the uh, lumbar spine provide stability to the low back. I mean, very important for alignment and for function, and now uh, research is coming out uh, as well related to breathing. And how are they affected by poor posture, or what we call forward head posture or kyphosis, and what are some possible consequences? We've talked in the past extensively about forward head, or forward head rounded shoulders posture. When um, the head drifts forward, the muscles that run from the skull to the upper cervical vertebra, they become elongated. So for instance, the rectus capitis anterior and the longus capitis, the muscles that move the head forward into flexion on the neck, in this type of a posture, they become stretched. And muscles that are stretched tend to become weak. And they also tend to lose their endurance to maintain proper alignment. So if those muscles are weak, there'll be less of a restraint to this type of movement. So people will be more likely to develop forward head, rounded shoulders posture. So when we think about changing someone's alignment, we can't think only of stretching tight structures that are pulling the head back. We have to also think about strengthening and training those muscles that keep the head in proper alignment on the neck, i.e. the deep neck flexors. And what are the consequences to poor condition of the deep neck flexors? There's lots of research coming out related to uh, the correlation between weakness and poor endurance of the deep uh, neck or deep cervical flexors and headaches, for instance, be it migraine or tension type headache or cervicogenic headache, headache originating uh, from the neck, coming from the neck. Um, so there's a lot re related to headache. There's also research related to chronic neck pain and dysfunction or a weakness and poor endurance of this deep neck flexor system. And again, as I mentioned, uh, breathing as well seems to be correlated to uh, impairment of, the, of these muscles and this system. Now you've been doing some research using the posture jack mm -hmm. to increase the endurance capacity of deep neck flexors. Can you explain that research to us? Yeah, I'm a professor at the New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury, New York, and we've been looking at the effect of posture jack training on the endurance of the deep neck flexor muscles. 
And we took three groups of individuals. One, we simply tested the endurance um, on the table in the supine back lying position. The second group, they held onto the table and we repeated the procedure. And the third group um, engaged the handles of the posture jack. And we found that the posture jack group had significantly improved endurance of these muscles. Now we don't know if it lasts, we haven't tested that, but it appears that there is a significant short-term effect on improved endurance, which is key. Again, thinking about headache patients, patients with chronic neck pain, poor posture, perhaps related to shoulder problems, rotator cuff tendonitis, bursitis, all these conditions related to forward head, rounded shoulders posture, and weakness of the deep neck flexor muscles could possibly be helped um, with an intervention that would improve the endurance and strength and overall function of these muscles. The other thing that we've been doing for years is working on trigger points. And we, uh, we employ massage techniques and acupuncture and trigger point injections and spray and stretch as per uh, Travell and Simons. What we're realizing though is that these knots in the superficial neck muscles be it the upper trapezius muscle or the levator scapulae muscle, these knots may be developing as a consequence of underlying weakness in the deep neck flexor system. So what we need to do is to strengthen those stabilizers, those core stabilizers of the neck, and then perhaps the superficial system won't need to become as um, overactive as it is, and these knots will tend to subside perhaps on their own as there's less of a need for them to uh, stabilize the neck. And that's happening because the deep neck flexor system is not doing its job. So we're excited. Um, we're looking to uh, publish um, the research uh, this fall um, on the effect of the posture jack on improving the endurance of these muscles. We're really excited about it. Okay, can you tell me here, can you teach me how to use the posture jack to strengthen my deep neck flexor muscles? Sure. What are some exercises I can do? First, you want to place yourself into neutral. So can I do it sitting down? Sure, you can. So you want to force the uh, the handles down. Okay. You can't see my handles because they're below the table. But so you're using your your triceps and your shoulder depressors mm -hmm. to bring the shoulder girdle, again the collarbone and the scapula, clavicle and scapula, mm -hmm. down, which is jacking the spine up, mm -hmm. and that'll make you um, more vertical. So we talk about Feel alignment that's right balanced. Right that's um, efficient and vertical. So that's pulling you in towards the central axis. So that's, that's the first thing you need to do. From there, you want to just gently, and these muscles are trained with very gentle forces. Mm -hmm. So allow your chin to just fall naturally into your throat. Don't look down because your eyes will determine neck position. So keep your eyes looking straight and allow your head to flex or to rotate forward around an axis that runs through your ears. So imagine an axis running through the ears and allow your head to move forward around that axis so that your chin moves towards your throat. And if you do that with very light forces, mm -hmm. not using your superficial muscles, but your deep system, you'll start to access these deep neck flexors. And then we can ramp up the difficulty by putting you on your back and having you work against gravity. We can put you off the end of the table and then really enhance the difficulty of the technique. And again, it's not only um, strength, which is part of it, um, but it's also the endurance, how they maintain their contraction over a longer period of time. That's what we need to sustain normal alignment, endurance. Can I expect a, a, a significant improvement in my headaches or in some of the other neck pains I'm feeling if I do condition those? If the, the headache is related to a mechanical impairment, as in cervicogenic headache, um, possibly even in tension type, and in some patients with migraine, though that's a biochemical problem, um, mechanical factors could be a trigger. So if you improve the strength and endurance of your deep neck flexors, you may have fewer migraines. You may uh, have fewer cervicogenic headaches. That would probably be the headache category that